going live? We are. And okay. good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to the first episode of River City Presents. My name is Brian Sullivan. I am the founder and CEO of River City Festivals. We are joined here this evening by John and Avalon with Catoctin Creek, and we're going to hear from them in just a moment. Uh, we're very excited to bring uh, tonight's episode and this series to you. Uh, you know, since we started our first event and founded River City Festivals with the Stony Point Beer Festival in 2018, we have since held over 15 events throughout Virginia, from Charlottesville to Norfolk and Richmond in between. And while we're disappointed right now that we can't be with you in person to present uh, tonight's event, we are excited about this opportunity to bring tonight's episode and this series to you. So with River City Presents, we're going to be having one-on-one -on -one live conversations with different distilleries and breweries and wineries and cideries all across the Commonwealth. We're going to be having conversations about how they've been dealing with the current situation, what they have coming up. We're going to be doing some live tastings, and we're going to be doing some special behind-the-scenes tours of their facilities. So hope you enjoy tonight's episode and what we have to show you. As I mentioned, our first guest here is Catoctin Creek. They're located in Purcellville, Northern Virginia. It's about halfway between DC and Winchester. They were formed in 2009, and they're most well known for their Roundstone Rye Whiskey. And we're gonna be hearing about this and taste, doing a virtual tasting of it tonight, along with many of their other products. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the team to you tonight. John and Avalon, how are you doing? Good. Doing fantastic. How are you tonight, Brian? Oh, couldn't be better. As I mentioned, I'd rather we could do this in person with everyone, but with the ability of you guys having your products all across ABC stores throughout the Commonwealth, and now I understand you're able to ship direct to people as well. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We actually are using, um, on our website, it's CatoctonCreekStore.com, and we are able to ship anywhere in the state of Virginia and through Prestige, is that right? Uh, in Prestige for, uh, so I covered, you need to flip it. Oh, I'm, hold on guys, <laughs> bear with us, I'm learning, learning stuff. Okay, can you see me? Got you. Good? Yeah, you look great. All right, so um, I am the regional sales manager for Catoctin. I cover DC, Maryland, and Delaware. Um, for those states, we use Prestige LeDroit as our distributor. So any <clears throat> bars, restaurants, we order through them. As for, you know, patrons, you go through any um, liquor store. Our ABC stores in all of Virginia carry us. And then um, a large array of liquor stores in D.C., Maryland, Delaware. We're in Total Wine. We're in D.C. Costco for our Roundstone, which is our most well-known. And then if you go on our website, <coughs> excuse me. they can ship it to your house. So we're going to do a tasting today of all of our products. So we're going to feel nice and warm at the end. Where do you we're known for our whiskey. Let's start at the whiskey, right? The whiskey? Okay. So our Roundstone Rye, uh, this is our flagship. This is the one that we've won most of our awards on. And if you didn't already know, uh, Dr. Brief, we are Virginia's most awarded whiskey. So when we were established in 2009, we're actually the first distillery to be established in Loudoun County since Prohibition. So when we started, there were maybe like six distilleries in all of Loudoun County and all of Virginia, or including both. Uh, there are now upwards of 60 distilleries. So out of all 60, we are still the most awarded whiskey in Virginia. So Roundstone, <coughs> not COVID, this little tickle <laughs> um, So Roundstone is 100% rye. So we don't cut it with any corn or barley. It's all um, unmalted rye that we source out of uh, two farms in Virginia and one out of Pennsylvania. And uh, again, 100%. So a lot of distilleries don't like to work with 100% uh, rye. It's a very sticky and messy grain to work with. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically, when you put it into the vat and try to um, essentially make the mash, it will get really, uh, it basically turns into like dough. It gets really sticky and really difficult to work with. So instead of, you know, really working it like, you know, George Washington, which is why we ended up using rye since we're so close to Mount Vernon, George Washington, that was his whiskey of choice, so we wanted to stay historically relevant to the area, uh, so we picked rye. They did it, they basically just turned it in and 
truth be told, they actually peed in it to break down the en- <laughs> ember enzymes. That's how they made their whiskey. We don't pee in our whiskey. Instead, we use <laughs> natural enzymes to make it. Becky, who is our owner uh, and distiller, Becky and Scott are the owners, husband and wife, uh, Becky being a chemical engineer. She's a very smart lady. She's like, oh, we don't need to do the other stuff. We are going to use natural enzymes to break down the mash and then be able to then turn it into the whiskey. Uh, so very, it's kind of the bourbon drinker's rye. So it's got a nice little sweetness to it. Um, it's not too spicy. Think more cinnamon spice versus that black pepper spice. There you go, John. Yeah, buddy. Right. Yeah, buddy. And we have a couple of cocktails before you do this. Uh, so we have our show, Netflix and Cocktail. <laughs> We had two cocktails and a little some after that. So, uh, so yes, brown sunrise. So you get a nice little sweetness to it um, without it being overly spicy. So, cheers. Really smooth, really easy drinking. Anytime that I've ever done a tasting or tasted new um, restaurant owners uh, on it, they're always very surprised how smooth it is for being a ride. You don't get that really big bite. It's super creamy. It's got more like banana bread on the front nose. That's our round stone. And then we come to the distillery's favorite, which is our distiller's edition. Um, they, it's the same mash build for the round stone rye, which is our 80 proof. The distiller's edition is our 92 proof. And then our cast proof um, sits at 116. So it's all the same mash build. The only difference is essentially the proofs and how they're selected. So the distiller's edition, the way that it's selected is we get a bunch of 92s and we taste through them and whatever has that like specific extra little spice level but still very smooth um that's one that we picked for the distiller's edition the cast proof um maybe one out of every uh barrels gets picked to be cast proof to just even though it's a high alcohol not it, we want it to be very smooth and super drinkable and sippable to where you don't necessarily need to add ice you can or maybe a little water uh, but the 92 is my personal favorite along with everybody else yeah we call it the good stuff or the shift drink over here <laughs> and that's a seven dollar difference to you guys the first round stone over there the 80 proof is 45.09 here for your virginians and uh the distillers edition is going to be a seven dollar difference like i said 52 cheers to you guys cheers all right and then we come to our casper so like that's i said fantastic. the only difference between them is truth and the selection process so one other thing that they all have in common is they are all Kosher. Uh, we actually have our star K on the back there, if you see. So that is certified kosher. And John, do you want to riddle off what Spock is? Because yes, Spock. Spock is solar powered, organic, certified kosher. Drink rye and prosper, people. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at the. But John look. is just going through them. I have my little tasters in the back. Well, no, they're a little. She, she's been giving me small ones. <laughs> she's been giving me small ones. All right. So. And going down the line, unfortunately, we can't open this because it's our limited edition and it comes out once a year, so it's not necessarily a one off. Oh, sorry. There we go. Our hickory syrup. Uh, so we age the whiskey in hickory syrup barrels from where, John? Falling Bark Farms here in Virginia. Uh, a sweet couple out here. They, did, they actually do like a Virginia hickory syrup, very unique to Virginia. Um, we have several different types. I'm going to do a quick run through. Check it out. And these are available also at the Catoctin Creek store. I tell you what, you take their, uh, their hickory syrup and you, you mix it with any of these ryes and you can end up with a uh, sort of a, a hickory old fashioned, fantastic drink. All right, so this is our Paradisa. Is that a- Perugia. Perugia, I never know how to it's a, it. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a spin off of the word Perugia, meaning the beginning of, uh, it was the very first thing we ever distilled. So the, uh, He's saying the first thing that we ever distilled once we get to the tour. He's going to tell you a little bit about Barney and why he's called Barney mm-hmm. because of this guy right here. Yep. Uh, so we, I like to start when I'm doing the tastings with the pear because pear, if you've ever had a pear, it's a very light, delicate fruit. It's not really super juicy with flavor, but it's got those very subtle tones to it. So we like to start with it. Just be, um, it, It's just a soft drink. It's delicious. If you were to take a bunch of songs and taste them through it, it would be surprising if they were to guess that it was pear. They're like, I know it's fruit but I'm not quite sure what kind of fruit. Uh, but super smooth. It's definitely one of the favorites of people at the distillery and outside of the distillery. So. It's done in that German schnapp style. So it's 80 proof. Um, it's a diabetes for appetite. Great way to start the day or end it. Did we do it? Whatever, gosh, here we go. Yeah, we, there we are. <laughs> ah! 
Um, but when I talk about these fruit brandies, just to be clear, they are not sweet. These are 80 proof. There's still no syrup added, no flavoring. These drink the way like a cognac would, except it's made from the specific fruit labeled, um, that European style. So this is the way that I like to do it. So I do the pear sure. and then the apple and then the peach just because peaches have a lot more, you know, boosted flavor. It's a lot juicier. All right. So those, okay. those are the, the peach. This is the apple. So okay, our apple brandy. Oh, and the other thing before we uh, go to the apple brandy, the pears we actually source from Fabioli Winery out in, what's that town? That's in Leesburg, babe. Yep. So we Doug get, Fabioli. We get our pears from them. Uh, we did a collaboration years ago, which is really cool. Of the, they grew pears into a bottle. So in case you didn't know how to do that, they basically, it's on the tree and the buds happen. They put the glass up there and they cinch it on. And so the pear grows inside and then they poured the brandy over it and then sold it that way. The beauty of the tasting room, right? You know, check this out. At the festivals, you don't get these visual aids, do you? But check this out. These were the bottles. We did a hand select amount of these where they right. actually had the pear grown in. There's and That's a Virginia thing. Asian pear. And that's the type of pear that they're using to make into a wine, which we then turn into this beautiful brandy. Uh, just a great sipping drink. End of the day. Fancy cocktails. All of those fruit brandies over there are going for $29.09 a pop. And they're all made from locally sourced uh, fruit. So fabioli. And then here we got our apple brandy from the Quarter Branch uh, Orchard. A really tasty, clean apple brandy. River City Festival, shout out to Richmond. That apple brandy is a collaborative effort with Blue Bee Cidery. And what's really crazy about it, it's uh, Courtney and, and, uh, at the cidery, and it's Becky here at the distillery. That is a 100% woman-owned, woman-operated, woman-created product. Um, exclusive here at the distillery, but you can buy it through our website for online shipping. Otherwise, you have to come up to the distillery to buy it. Can't buy it in ABC. And not only are we uh, female owned and female distilled, there's actually a very large presence of females at the distillery. Mm -hmm. We take up the majority, whether in sales or you know at the actual distillery, which is very cool. It was nice to come into that. And working as a female in the industry, more so like a boys club, so coming to a distillery to where there's a huge um, female presence was amazing to be a part of, it still is. So this is, we're moving on to peach. Short Hill? Yeah, we got this. This is my favorite fruit brandy, guys. Look at the color. It's just like nice golden. Yeah, yeah. We're working with uh, Bluemont Farms, which is about 15 minutes away. Short Hill Mountain is an actual mountain range. It's right down the street from us. Um, and uh, just dripping off the tree peaches during the summer. Look at what that comes and into. It's a very strong peach flavor that you get from it. But again, not overly sweet. There's no sugar added or anything. You just get that nice natural peach flavoring uh, that comes out with it. And then we have our 1757 Brandy. So this one uh, is, a, so because we're in Virginia, we like to be as sustainable as possible. We like to help out our fellow um, men and businesses around. So this is a collaboration of several different wineries. Uh, it changes slightly because, it, and so does the blend. If you've ever been to a Virginia winery or a winery that's not a big guy, the grapes, it changes per year. Some could be a good season, some could be a not. It's my majority Chamberson, and then it's a blend of other uh, varietals in there. Traditionally, the secondary grape would be a Seville Blanc, something that's like mm -hmm. just a thick, vinous grape that uh, does really well here in Virginia. All Loudoun County fruit. So almost done in that cognac style, right? It's a state, it's, a, it's local, it's all, you know, yeah. um, European red wine barrels. Yeah. So every time I taste this with people or just by myself, it mm. makes me mad. <laughs> brandy doesn't have a better name, especially Virginia brandy, because this is so smooth and so tasty. I wish that at some point in time, there's going to be a big whoosh of, you know, cognac brandies outside of like Hennessy and Cavassier that people know. Like there's local brandies that are really delicious. And it just getting it into the mouths of babes to just. That's right. Out. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And cheers to you. You ask 10 different people what their experience is with this brandy, and you get 10 different answers. Um, and they're all delicious. Yeah. No, no, they're positive. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's correct that. I mean, my point is, is that, like, all of these, I think people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, you get the banana, you get the sweet, the carrot. Oh, yeah, you get the pear, you get the apple. Mm -hmm. Here, like, you get people who are like, oh, it's very gingery. It's very woody. Mm -hmm. It's very menthol-y. It's very overripe banana. It's very grapey. It's very vinous. And, and depending on who you're talking to, it's just always something different. But it's smooth. 
80 proof, always about four years old in these ex Bordeaux red wine barrels. It is a spectacular wine. See, that's the only one that I put down all the way. And, and, and hey, listen, we also just bottled this today. Yes, Mr. Today. Henry Hill, shout out. So that's going to be ready for sale here very soon. Wait, what bottle are we missing? Right we're missing the, we're missing the exclusive. Do they know about this? They know about this. Okay, so no, 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 no. It's right here. It's, it's, no, no, it's right here. It's yeah. right here. This one is one of a kind. This will never be recreated again. So it's a little, it, it's near and dear to my heart. So several of my accounts in D.C. and Maryland, due to COVID, to take in their private barrels. So the private barrels consisted of a, a, a beer barrel, a uh, apple brandy, a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. and then was there another one? Ooh. Beer. There was beer. There was we'll wine. Just, we'll stick with those for now. Yeah. Um, so those were all sent back to us because they weren't able to continue to buy them because either the businesses were out of business for temporary uh, forms or they just not moving enough at the uh, doing to go cocktails. Mm -hmm. um, so we blended it, trying to make, you know, a good thing out of a bad situation and all of those barrels into this. So this is, again, very personal to me. Uh, we will be releasing this June 1st, Monday, June 1st. At First. One. First. Oh. I wasn't <laughs> stopping you. I know I wasn't stopping you. <laughs> Uh, it's Monday, June 1st at 8 a.m. Uh, we are, are not open on Monday, so we did that mm -hmm. specifically just so we're not getting lines at the distillery for mm -hmm. people, you know, social distancing and all that. So online, it will be live at 8 a.m. On the website, it does say sold out. It's not sold out. It's just not active yet. Uh, and there are no pre-orders. So if you're going to, if you're interested in buying it, it's two per person, two bottles per person at 8 a.m. on Monday, June 1st. It can ship. It can be picked up curbside. You cannot call to get it you cannot right. walk in to get it you have to do it online june 1st at 8 a.m at uh Katata creek store .com. yes and one of the really important things about this uh whiskey of the proceeds going to be donated to four different um in restaurant industry chairs mm -hmm. so 100 percent, we are not making a profit on this at all this is front of house, back of house. This is bartenders. Um, this is um, families uh, with uh, children in the industry. This is with, uh, with immigrant families yeah, in the so back of the, house. The, uh, uh, charities is for people, Im immigrants who are not able to get the benefits that everybody else are getting currently. Get you know get some you know money in their account to just you know like what we're all trying to. So that is the infinity. It's the hashtag all in this together. All in this together. I've heard or in this together. Not this is my stamp work, by the way. And this is probably one of my better ones. These are, uh, they're not all going to look exactly the same because they are hand dyed. Yep, yep. Wait, wait, let me see. <laughs> like a, oh, yeah, check like it out. Number two, what, what does that say? 28 of 548. That's mm -hmm. the truth right there, man. Yep, look at that. And it's uh, uh, number 11XO, as in hugs and kisses. Mm -hmm. Yep, we love you guys. Um, right. That's the only blended whiskey you'll buy from Kentucky Creek today, so it's definitely worth checking out. All right, you want to switch it around, John? You want to do a switch? Yep. All right, let's pass it around. <laughs> hey guys, Brian, how are we doing, man? On time, we good? Is that informative? Why are we in double picture? Almost. <laughs> yeah, you All guys right, are you guys are doing fantastic here. Uh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> Yeah, man, you uh, missed out on the taste in that. That was a fantastic. So what you just experienced there is what you will get when you are um, at any festival with Kataki Creek. Sorry. We will sit there table side and we will pour and we will talk you through it. But this is something that you can't get at the festival, you know, you know, courtesy COVID. Let's go into the distillery and actually see it so you can see what we're about. All right, first off, look at this. Distillery, Rebecca Harris, proprietor. Woman owned, yeah. woman operated. Very proud. Let's go, guys. You always get introduced to some of our barrels, start off in the front, and then come into the back. As you can see, we are a facility, so we've got like, the forklift, open space. Um, for anybody who's been to any of these uh, bigger distilleries, you can see this is the whole room right here. This is everything that we do on site here. We do everything by hand, by glass, grain hey check that out and from the product we are from grand glass here in the united states of america too 
all of our grain is coming from uh, local sources. We're working with four different farmers. Two of them are in Virginia, two of them are in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're talking about a Rappahannock rye, a white rye, a red rye, and Amish rye. Um, blended together to make a 100% blend, a 100% single barrel unmalted rye, unique to the category. And when we were talking about barley, this is barley right here. This is the very first still we had. We used to live about 15 minutes up the street off of Richardson Lane in a little blue shuttered door kind of warehouse facility. Um, this is all we had. And the very first thing we did was make pear brandy using Doug Fabioli's pear wine. Um, there is an enzyme, this is so crazy. There is an enzyme that is in um, pear that when fermented, this is so specific, when fermented at a specific heat, when it interacts with copper, it creates a firework element. Now, I'm not talking about an explosion. No bombs, nothing blew up here. <laughs> but when this thing heated up, this became a vivid amethyst purple, gorgeous purple. We're freaking out. We just bought this machine, and here it is, bright purple. And we're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And we're freaking out, but then we're excited. We're going to be the only people in the entire country with a purple still. <laughs> and as soon as the interaction cooled off, this became a very steely gray. It wasn't an attractive color. Our intern at the time uh, moved on since. Greg Moore put some elbow grease to it and was able to bring it back to the copper color. And if you walk around it every once in a while, you get that purple hue off it. And every time we make brandy, we repurpleize it. So Barney, like the big purple dinosaur, that's where that comes from. Now over here is Ron Swanson. Big man Jamma. Yeah, man. Big guy, you know, parks and recreation. Big guy that drinks a lot of whiskey. That's all he does. He makes rye all day, every day. And here, it's a difference of 100 gallons to 300 gallons of electric steam power. It's about... Uh, Know, preserving quality. So what we're going to do over here, you want to talk about the fermentation tanks? These are the old fermentation tanks. We used to use these um, to make all of our mash. Uh, it is now used as a dump tank for our, our spin mash bill, which we actually donate to farmers. So uh, if you see these shuttered doors over here, every day from 9 to 5, at some point, there's a truck that comes along and it's a farmer, it's a local farmer picking up spit rye to feed to the happy cows here in Virginia. So John, tell them about why we have double doors and the little history of the oh, distillery. Yeah. yeah. Look at the span. Look at the brick in this place. This is a 1920s building. It used to be a bank back in 1920s, early 20s. There was a, a famous field back in the tasting room. I'll point out some of that brick layout for you. But there was a point in time when after this bank, there was this famous fire that kind of hit personal and loved it. When it resurrected, it became one of the very first Buick dealerships in the country on the East Coast. And this was a, a big deal. And so the tasting room was the showroom for the cars. Right here was when they would like open the shutter doors uh, to allow people to take those cars out, which was all dirt and path back then. We can't show you our office. It's a little bit of a private situation. <laughs> but back there is a horse stable, which has become our office. So I stay in the horse stable. <laughs> That's John's office. <laughs> Directly where the Scots and, and, and Scots. Uh, but um, <clears throat> when we first did the layout here, there was no blueprint for the sort of drywall just lining up on this side and the other Which side. Which is crazy because why would you want to cover those beautiful doors? You'll see and another side of it when we come to the other side. Of that glass? That's all original glass. Can you we see? tore it down to make more space for our forklift operation. I don't know how good the no resolution is, like but anymore. you can see that there are natural um, in, like inconsistencies in the glass because it's all hand -brown. I don't make glass like that anymore. You can't even, I mean, you can like recreate it. But like, this is natural glass, um, which immediately changed our whole position because when we came in here and we're gutting the place, um, Scott I, threw his sledgehammer into that door and was like this whoa. far from hitting the glass. Yeah. And he was like, there's doors underneath here? Yeah. There's windows underneath yeah. here? Because there's two, the eight were rooms. Be back there. Never there. But when they saw this double door thing, they're like, forget that. Here's a Prime display for our stills. We make the taste room in here, and everything changed overnight like that. Um, very, very cool experience. 
So as far as like process codes, if I give you like a real flash forward on this, we still, um, so we ourselves, here's what I want to say. We're not farmers, all right? We're not copper uh, smiths. We're not wood, but we are in fact builders. We're making things in house from grain to glass, but we're working with the local farmers um, to be able to produce this 100% unmalted rye that gets pounds of grist mill over here in Clark County to create basically like a flower like consistency. Here, look at this. Look at this stuff. Look, it doesn't, it doesn't like get stuck together. This is, there's nothing happening here. It's just like, isn't that cool? And you got your rye, and what we do is we put it in our mash tun over there, and we, we cook it. We cook it. That's Basically, that. what we make is a big, big old stew. We have um, about a thousand liters of water in here, and we bring it to a rolling boil. We put about, um, gosh, about 200 pounds, and I might be wrong on those numbers, but we put about 200 pounds of rye in here, and we cook it. It becomes thick, almost cake batter like substance. Uh, the refers to as water um, um, not yeah it's not super attractive looking it's just this blood stuff uh, it, it smells, smells like really yeah it smells like oatmeal you remember rye bread like it's exactly the same thing we take this uh, we add a distiller's yeast it's a very different yeast to a brewer's yeast we're looking for a higher pH and a higher alcohol content to our uh, fermentation tanks. These are fairly new to us because, again, those blue tanks back there used to be these, and now we have these here. Um, Big upgrade. Yeah, massive upgrade, and they're easier to follow and keep track of temperature. You can look right here. Look at this. So it's, it's, it's working. Happening. Yeah. So yeah, the tanks are full right now with. Um, yeah, it's bubbling. Yeah, we got, we, got the, we got the rye mash in there, and we got the yeast, and the yeast is attacking those sugars and turning them into, uh, you know, alcohol. So at this point, if you could smell the rum right now, it smells very much kind of like a, a raw hefeweizen. It's got, it's got that, that rye bready, but there's that citrus, that clove, that orange, you know, those things that you're kind of that yeasty kind of quality. And um, it takes about, I would say about five days. It's not like pressing three on a microwave, right? <laughs> like, like it's, when it's ready, it's ready. You take it and we'll transfer it by using a gravity feed. We use pipelines to fill up a, one of these, uh, one of these tanks over here and uh, use a forklift to lift it up into the still. And once you put it in the still, which we don't dump over again, we grab it, feed it with the pipeline. Um, alcohol evaporates before water does, right? So what ends up happening is the solid and this and this and this and this water and this color all remains here. And it's evaporating up this is esoteric like vapor. People back in the day of spirits, and they also thought it was like sort of the spirit of the original ingredient. That's where the name originates from. So, what we end up doing with this uh, column still is this vapor is going to have to keep hitting each of these plates until it rises up to the top. And it's, it's just imagine this vapor kind of navigating through this system and it's head back on the plate into the machine, right? And so, opportunity once it's hot enough to re evaporate. This is considered a second distillation. And it happens multiple times, or it just depends on when the product is ready to go. So when people are saying, how many times do we distill? We do one distillation. However, with our machine, stylistically, it's reminiscent of Irish whiskey, that triple distilled whiskey, that white body. That's what we're looking for. Once it reaches the top, and it travels into what's called a condenser. Basically, what's in there is like this chilled worm tube full of cold liquid. So when the vapor hits it, it recondenses and what comes out over here is high octane alcohol. Three different types: uh, heads, hearts, and tails. Uh, heads are these volatile methanols. You can't drink them. We use it to clean the building. It's the stuff that I'm keep blind. Don't yeah, drink don't that. Drink. No, no, no. But we'll <laughs> clean everything from the machine to our toilet. So it'll take a sharpie off of the shirt. <laughs> um, Ethanol, which is the main part, the hearts, um, is the good juice. That's the stuff we can drink it right off. Of That's the white whiskey. Yeah, man. Moonshine, white lightning, white dog. Mosby, remember that? Mosby's. We used to we used to make it back in the day, but at one point or another, we became enough where we needed to turn all that white dog into whiskey, and that ended that. But the third part is called tails, 
which are drinkable ethanols, but fusel oils get involved. They just don't taste all that great. Yeah, they're bitter. Yeah. They would make trash whiskey. A lot of companies will dump that. We will take it. We'll put it in tubs like that, like these things over here. The white guys? Yeah, the white guys, or even those little milk cakes, depending on how much we're making. But once we have enough of it, we'll collect it, and we'll redistill it, and it'll be this really bright, creamy, sweet, and spicy rye that we use as the base for the watershed gin. And that's, that's the base of the gin. Did we taste the gin today? I don't know, John. You set it up. <laughs> Do we need to go try when some gin? We'll show you the old brick from the original building when the fire burned down, and we'll have a little gin to say goodnight, okay? Perfect. So ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, all the rise from this machine, all these, and any of like single barrel of efforts, any of our specialties, we're going to use uh, Barney for that. Um, at the end of the day, we come home over here. Now, Brian, you were asking earlier about like what it is that we're doing now. Avalon and I are street people. We go out to the, to the to the cities and, and you know sell the wares. We're out. We're people, town. people. Yeah, we're people. <laughs> we're stuck doing this right now. Um, look, we're a bottle of gin today. That's actually yep. a Virginia ABC order getting ready to happen. There, there we go. This is the semi-automatic bottle in line. Can carry M. Karen B. Rowe commissioned this. This was not something that was uh, something that we purchased mm -hmm. out of the fluke. This was brought to us and made for a semi-automatic bottle in line. Basically, what we do is we put bottles here. They they fill up, we bring them over to this light box where we then check the quality of the product to make sure there's no impurities in it. If there are, we will filter them using a coffee seed. This is how we filter our product, guys. We ever. And once it's ready to go, we use the heating lamp, we'll then seal our labels and look over here for the quality they made spirit today. It is the watershed gin. That's what we've been bottling all day today. We will finish this drum off tomorrow. Very and cool that stuff. is, oh, look, I only had one in there. It's like I was planning this. <laughs> all local gold dinner ingredients. Now, we've been winning awards all over the world, not just here in the local area. Um, we're the most awarded whiskey and most awarded distillery out of the state of Virginia. Woman owned, woman operated, family owned, family operated, solar powered, organic certified kosher. So, product. We'll talk about how we came about of what gave us, got the aha moment of opening a distillery himself. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's a good story. Check over here, guys. If you're walking this way, you see this old brick down here? This is the old building right before the fire happened. This is early 1920s. Look at this brick. Early 1920s brick. All original. And after that fire, this is what erected up and became a Buick dealership after that. This wall right here. See, we got the certification oh, yeah, on there. Up. I think that's a gear. I'm not yep. quite sure. <laughs> <Part of the> car. <laughs> I don't know anything about cars. This, Talk to me about whiskey. This wall right here, underneath it, when we were doing construction, we discovered a sealed off doorway to a basement. We opened it up, and there's like a deep stairway, full of water, electrical cords, and found Jimmy Hoppe's box. <laughs> <laughs> don't quote that, that last part. But, but you know what we did find? We found a furnace that was made from asbestos. And we we're like, all right. So we drained the water, all of our construction, we dumped into that hole, and then we sealed it and we built the wall on top of it. So this random basement is down underneath us. I might be lying, and there might be just hidden barrels there that are going to age until we die. <laughs> Who knows? But the reality is, is that there's a lot of steep, rich history in this distillery. Um, in the span of a little bit of 11 years, we became the most awarded distillery out of the, out of the state. Becky herself has now become the president of the Craft Spirits Association, members of the VDA, and uh, we are, are just constantly evolving. We're now in 26 states. We are now uh, international from the UK to, to, to what is that? We're in about, what, six or seven uh, countries. Yeah. Yeah, we got Germany, I Mexico. Know Mexico, we just got through Vipermax. Hey, I might be saying that wrong, but all around Mexico, we love you guys. Thank you very much for your support. And um, just to wrap it up, let me quickly pour some gin. Some right? gin? We're ready for some gin? All right. You want to do it? Right, sure. You, you got to switch it though. 
So uh, a little history. Let's see if I can go to the flip of the boop. There we go. That, nope. There we go. Hi, guys. So uh, a little history about Katakton uh, and how we came about. Oh, What's happening? <laughs> look at me and look like an old program. <laughs> I got you. I got you now. So, these, these sunglasses? so how we came about was, okay, Scott and Becky are the owners, their husband and wife. Uh, Becky, as I mentioned before, is a chemical engineer, and Scott was a, um, a computer tech. So he had a big love for whiskey, just not so much his job. And about so 11 years ago, they took a trip out to Ireland, you know, just kind of get away from it all and have a good time. And after touring plenty of the distilleries, a lot of whiskey, Scott finally realized, like, wait a minute, <laughs> a scientist. she could totally do this. I hate my job. I love whiskey. We're opening up a distillery. So they came back. He put his life savings into it. And that's, that's the history. How crazy is that? This is a married couple, welded dude, chemical engineer, software engineer, and they go on a holiday and have a midlife crisis and basically are sitting in a town in Ireland called Roundstone. Yes. Right? So they were in Roundstone, Ireland, and that's when Scott, I guess, had the, the whiskey that threw him over the edge. Yep. Like, yep, we're doing it. Came out of Bush Mills and was like, let's just stop doing what we're doing and doing what they're doing. And the whole, basically, the, the conversation for the agreement of doing it was Becky's like, hey, I can make whatever you need me to make. Just make sure we make money. Yeah. Scott's like, done. So that's Scott's job now. Becky makes all of our whiskey, and he makes sure that we make all of our money. <laughs> and, and keeps us employed. It's a very Yay. balanced relationship that they got going. So we're tasting the gin now. There we go. Made from the rye that we used to make our whiskey, right? It's a very light gin. So you're, I always tell people, think more like botanically flavored vodka versus a traditional London dry gin. So you're not going to get like that... Christmas tree, pine, mm -hmm. to taste that juniper. As much as I love that, it's not for everyone. Um, so we, there is juniper in there. There's also um, orange peel, cardamom, cinnamon. Uh, what's another couple? Let me see. I always say it like you got your juniper, you got your coriander, your orange peel, star anise. Star anise, yeah, that's yeah, one of That's the yeah, little hint. I've been out of the field for like almost three months. Yeah, so our spiels, our spiels are rusty, man. I'm, I think we're killing it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, man. So, 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 and, 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 and the whole beauty about this is like, these are products that usually when I drink them, I, I like them with cocktails or, or, or on ice and every single one of these you're seeing on the table are surprisingly delicious by them. I have never had a gin that I can just drink room temperature and experience. I'll sip that for 10 minutes. Just smelling it's it. got a beautiful sweetness to it that yes. comes from the rye and the other botanicals that we put in there. There's how many botanicals do we put in there? It's a proprietary blend. So I mean, there's, there's I want to say anywhere from six to maybe 12. Right, 12. Those are the secret ones. Yeah, yeah. We can't. I mean, Avalon and I actually got to recently make the gym, which was an exciting experience for we us. Take pictures of we were not allowed to take we pictures. We were not allowed to show all the ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, really neat. But yeah, and so we also have our online store. So during COVID and hopefully this continues forward, um, everything that we have at the distillery, including apparel and our syrups and our um, shared collaborations, which is our maple syrup, we have honey, we have shrubs and all kinds of uh, flavoring tonics and such. Those are all on our online store, so you can buy them. Uh, and I'm fingers crossed that it will continue once everything opens up again, because I can't imagine ABC being like, we don't want more money. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty confident that in some capacity, we're going to continue to do this. Um, I don't know if the regulations will change. But guys, I mean, just look at this. I mean, you website right now, you can buy gift packs. You can buy exclusives only at the distillery that can be shipped to your house. Glassware. Fun tchotchkes like the Scott Harris Catawson Creek 10 tackle. Take that you can grill with. You want ice on your whiskey, but you don't want to water it down. Try one of our rocks. Great decanters and glassware. We collaborate with several coffee makers, one Fredericksburg, one here in Virginia, that make fantastic coffee, barrel-aged uh, uh, coffees. And it's got that rye whiskey aroma when you go to brew it. A great holiday treat. All these amazing syrups. If you're a cyclist, we're at the ending of the WNOD. Look at that. We got cycling jerseys that are branded, shirts, 
hats, soaps. These are all artisans right here. We got a young person that makes these candles from our products, soaps from our products. Here's a couple of library price lists there for you to look at so you get sort of an idea. We have all these great books you can purchase online. We're working with DC and Bittermint to make these spectacular bitters. Well, he's making his own spectacular bitters, but we are making roundstone bitters. This is a project that I made with Denise Petty and Eric Kozlik, super fantastic. We support Pratt Standard. We got element shrubs. We actually use today, yeah, for our uh, cocktails. So if you guys start yours on uh, at six o'clock on Thursdays, every Thursday at five o'clock on Facebook Live, we have our Netflix and cocktails. Yep. So uh, essentially, what happens is we pick a TV show that is binge worthy or has been or currently, and we do like a little skit, little funny fun times in the beginning. We have costumes and all kinds of stuff, and then we name our cocktails after you know quotable lines in it. So today we did our Stranger Things, that's why I have my 80s hair happening right now. <laughs> I, remember. Uh, I was 11. And so we did um, the Upside Down uh, as a cocktail, which is a take on the pineapple upside down cake uh, shot. And we used our pear brandy along with the uh, honey, nope, which one was it? The pineapple mm -hmm. and turmeric shrub, shrub, shrub that you were just seeing there. And then the other one was I dump your ass, which <laughs> is a quote from 11. And that one incorporated uh, we a good friend of mine, George, uh, or sorry, Greg David, who owns George's uh, mixes. We used his margarita mix, our gin, and then we used a um, honeydew jalapeno shrub with that, shook it up, and then dumped it in the glass with the take on like the dirty dump, which is a bartender, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, term. Uh, and then we topped it with uh, pea flour, just kind of give it like that cool, like, Stranger Things, things like purple, blue, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do it every uh, Thursday at five. New cocktails, new costumes, new concepts every Thursday at five. And just a bunch of different treats. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always nuts. But um, Brian, do you have any questions for us, brother? Well, how is it? First of all, that was an amazing tour. Uh, give it us an opportunity. Thank you, man. To, I appreciate that. To see some things behind the scenes. I think it's certainly a lot more fun when you guys get to do the tasting yourselves right beforehand. So. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that, that brings a lot, a little extra spice. Um, so yeah, how is it that you guys, uh, how's operating for you now? I know you had some events going on, you've got some coming up, a lot of festivals and that type of thing. So, so how are you guys operating, um, you know, getting by being able to bring your products to the people? Can we talk about what happened to us a little bit? What happened to us? Well, well, cause we were, we're, we're, we're sales people. Right, we we are. She's she's the the, the Delaware. regional manager. I do Virginia, right? And and our job is to go out to restaurants and you know speak the gospel and promote Kentucky Creek. When this thing happened, they were, they pulled us. They were like, you can't go outside, right? You know, like you're, why why put more pressure on restaurants to spend money when they don't have money to spend, or they're afraid of the money that they currently have? So make, we didn't want to harass anybody in this time so yeah. instead they decided they're like okay we'll find a job for you we're not gonna like let you go or furlough you or whatever we're gonna find work for you at the distillery which is how we ended up working at the bottling line and just basically doing like grunt work for the distillery from inventory to cleaning the place like we've been doing all kinds of stuff man taking turns making the bathrooms really pretty <laughs> Uh, you we know, made the list. So yeah. there's a list in the back that is for like the entire staff to like who's in the back bathroom for the play bathrooms. We made the list. So yep, we're on the list now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I think that we won't fully get back on the streets until August. Now, as far as what the distiller did, is there was a uh, fairly large call for help on getting fairly access large? to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a gigantic it was call astronomical for large. To make sanitizer. Which we do not have anymore. Yeah, just to be very clear, there's no sanitizer being made at this facility. We have two months and we still get people asking yeah. about people it. People walk in, I get emails, I get clients that are asking, guys, we were making hand sanitizer at the very beginning of this thing when when it was like readily available. Once the uh, raw ingredients like isopropyl, glycerin, bottles, yeah. oh my gosh, everything is like either astronomically through the roof on price so just to put in perspective, or unavailable it would not make any sense for us to make hand sanitizer when we were making it our six ounce bottles we were selling for 9.95 right ounces. 
at the price point that it is now, it probably would be closer to 15 to 20 for six ounces. So Purell, at least in Percival and like other sanitizers are readily available. I know DC is still having an issue with it because I still get people asking, but yeah, we don't have any more sanitizers. I, I mean, here in Virginia, man, everywhere I go, whether it be a uh, gas, I mean, when I say everywhere I go, it's very limited, but I'm talking about like gas stations and my local grocery stores. Um, we had to go to a dollar store for an event at one point and, and sanitizer is everywhere right now. So like you're going to save your money just going and getting it from the source. Um, we ourselves are out of the business and we are very happily back to making whiskey, gin and brandy for people, um, which we bottled a lot of all three of those. And in we've been doing really well with the whiskey. Was it last Friday they ran out of whiskey to sell in the tasting room? Yep. Because we can you can order it online for any uh, if you live in Virginia, I know it makes no sense, but if you live in Virginia, you can order online and either pick it up at the distillery or ship it out and deliver it. And outside of that, like I'd mentioned before with Pearson's, if you're not in Virginia and you're in DC or you're in uh, Maryland, you can order it from Pearson's and they will ship it to you. They have our whole lineup of products at their store in DC in Glover Park. And as far as that sanitizer thing goes, man, we've been getting a lot of press for that. We've been all over, uh, gosh, I mean, printable uh, stuff, magazines, newspapers, digital. Um, we've had the governor involved with military, police, hospitals. We've helped out so much in our community. And, and we've for donated me, a lot. We donated to uh, about $5,000 to Baltimore Bartenders Guild. And then Richmond five, USBG. We, yep. And another five to Hook Hall Health, which is located in DC with my buddy Carl. Shout out Carl. Hey. What's up? He's saving the meatballs actually right now. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. He's like, I awesome. need meatballs. Pick them up on Monday. This one right here is a fan of meatballs. If you know Avalon Una Haas, look her up. Give her meatballs. So on my, in my Instagram them. is the Unicorn Whiskey Fairy. It just, well, hashtag Unicorn Whiskey Fairy. There's no doubt. Unicorn Whiskey Fairy. Johnny CCDC, Catawba Creek Distilling Company. There's a lot of shenanigans and fun content on there. And meatballs, at least four of this had happened. Any restaurant that I went into, whether it was a or not, they had meatballs. She wears unicorn gear. I wear bandanas usually. Today we're dressed down to look pretty for you people. Wanted to keep it a little bit more professional. We're glowing today. It's <laughs> been a very moist, it's been a warm day here at the distillery. But the temperature up here in Northern Virginia, all the machines, the lights, and the humidity, it hot. it's hot. It's humid and hot. It's this is not gel. This it's is al natural. I would not, I would not say that it sounds like, a, oh, you're distilling. Oh, it's so much there. fun. I mean, it's fun. We, we really love it. The time, but like it, on days like today, it is. We we need a bathing suit, like a pool, <laughs> just like a real hot yeah. little mister. Yeah. That, that's All amazing. the cold water couldn't help today, man. <laughs> we did what we could, but we're we're out here. And, and now you're on to the yeah. to the rye yeah. on the rocks, right? Yeah, man. Occasionally, yeah. Well, and I think. I just on that end, that, you know, very refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, do you have any questions for us, man? Well, you guys are just doing a fantastic job. I mean, this has been a trying time for everyone, but businesses and, and small businesses and family-run businesses, no less. Uh, you know, we've really missed being able to put on our events because uh, we missed yeah, the public. Too, we missed being able to put them on. But we miss being able to promote and showcase you guys. Uh, you know, we really strive at all of our events to be able to bring uh, Virginia and local products and distilleries and all the other breweries, wineries, and cideries. Uh, th that's what we feature at our event. So that's, that's why we wanted to start this program and, and feature you guys tonight. Uh, I would implore everyone who's, who's watching this, if you, if you haven't yet, please visit their website, uh, Katakin Creek. Check out all the products that we, that we looked at tonight. Look at all the things that John showed us along the wall. I think you guys have a, a kind of a, a bigger variant of products than anyone that I've seen. Um, as far as the shipping yeah. process goes, uh, I, I ordered uh, some for myself to have here tonight yep. uh, two days ago. It got here in two days. It was in very secure packaging. Uh, it had a big label on top that said you must be 21 to, to receive this product. And mm -hmm. FedEx knocked on the door and they made sure to check that for me. So, um, you know, I appreciate you guys joining tonight. Uh, I appreciate you, you showing us what, uh, what you've got. Um, look forward to seeing you at our next festival. Hopefully. That'll be yes. sooner rather than later. Well, yes, was, absolutely. It was an honor to be your first one. 
Yeah, man. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of it. And quick stop for River City Festivals. What I love about your festivals, man, is that it's not just one thing, man. You're doing, you're supporting Virginia, 100%. But it's, it's, it's spirits, it's ciders, it's wine, it's beer. It's everything. And when we go to your shows, everybody gets an opportunity to drink um, uh, to the heart's content responsibly. Uh, but they can buy products right there on site and take them with them. Um, they can, uh, begin shipping now, which is a new thing, but that's, that's something to talk about down the road. But ultimately, like, it's just a great hands-on experience. And I love working with you guys. You guys have always been good to us and we're going to continue to be good to you guys. We appreciate your support and we, we love it. Thank you very much for having us here today. I appreciate that. John Avalon, thank you all for being here tonight. Everyone, please make sure to visit thetalkingcreek.com and please make sure to follow and subscribe to us, River City Festivals. Thank you, everyone. Be safe. Enjoy your drinks. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.